Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic, coming at you live with our Facebook uh, live research moment. Um, it's been a little while. It's been about three or four weeks since I last did this, and um, you know, it feels good to be back doing this again because I really feel like it helps people understand a little bit more about what we do and, and why we do it and how it can help. The paper that I chose this time, because it's the start of the new year and I really want to, uh, you know, get kind of deep on some of the anatomy and the physiology. Um, this is a, a big paper and there's a lot of information in it. And so I'm just going to pick some small pieces, some tidbits out of it that uh, are really interesting, really helpful for understanding why the upper neck is so important and why the alignment of the upper neck is so helpful to the rest of the body. Um, <clears throat> and really, you know, uh, this is more about brain health. And so if we can uh, uh, correct upper neck misalignments, we can actually help the brain and the whole body work better. So the paper that I chose today is uh, this paper here. It's called The Role of the, of the Craniocervical Junction in Craniospinal Hydrodynamics and Neurodegenerative Conditions. Uh, lots of big words there. Uh, what are we talking about? So the craniocervical junction, this guy, it's the occiput or the base of the skull. So this is uh, the back of the head is here. The front would be this way. It's kind of sliced off there. And then C1, which is called atlas. This is the atlas vertebra. And C2 is axis here. And so C1 moves under the skull and C2 moves Basically, C1 moves under and on C2, but there's no disc above or below C1 here. Uh, and so what holds it in place are muscles, ligaments, and tendons, and the connection that it has to the skull, and then C2 and the rest of the spine. Because the rest of the spine has discs between all of the joints, except this little guy, right? So that's interesting, right? Um, so why, why is this area so important? Because if there's an injury to this area, if there's trauma to this area, uh, it is the most mobile joint in the spine. Therefore, it is more prone to injury and slip. And so when this joint goes out of place, it can actually affect the tissue above and the tissue below in a way that the rest of the spinal joints can't. Uh, and so in this paper, uh, Michael Flanagan, Awesome, amazing researcher. I've read a couple, I've read his book, many papers that he's written. Um, and actually, I'll pull up right here, two of his books, or well, one of his books and then another uh, paper book that he wrote. So the first one here is called The Downside of Upright Posture. Really interesting, really great book. It talks about the, um, uh, the importance of this fluid flow dynamic between the brain, the skull, and the rest of the spine and the body as well as his second paper slash book here, Craniospinal Hydrodynamics and Neurodegenerative and Neurological Disorders, very similar to the paper that he wrote here. Uh, so really, uh, really uh, well-written paper, very uh, expansive. But um, what, we, uh, what we go into are the arterial flow and the venous flow uh, and CSF flow uh, to and from the brain and why that is so uh, important. And so one of the first things he, he talks about here is how the arterial or the blood flow going to the brain. So this picture here, okay, blood flow going to the brain, 80% uh, is supplied through this common carotid artery. There's an external one and then an internal one that goes up into the skull that looks something like this so it goes to the base of the brain and this is called the circle of willis this little guy here if anybody's in anatomy and physiology this is something that you learn in school it's called the circle of willis and it supplies the entire brain and the brain stem here and all the cranial nerves that pop out um, so you know cranial nerves these are cranial nerves they supply the face the neck uh, the head a lot of the rest of the body with nerve supply and so that blood flow to that area is the, the life support. It is the oxygen and the, um, it's all of the energy that gets there. It goes through that blood, blood flow. And so that's important because 80% goes through the 
common carotid here, uh, the internal and the external carotid, and then 20% goes through the vertebral spinal column. And the, the little uh, artery there goes up into the foramen magnum and through the craniocervical junction, through the base of the skull here, through that, that upper neck bone. And so if it's out of alignment, it can affect that. And that 20%, that's, that's energy, information, oxygen to the brain. And when it is out of alignment, it can affect that blood flow and change that relationship. And so it's literally a chokehold on the brain. Now, way back when, uh, in the early 1930s, when upper cervical was first discovered, um, they actually called it uh, like a kink to the, to the nerve supply. This is actually a picture out of a textbook way back when, because they didn't understand the physiology and the anatomy um, in depth. But now we do, and we understand that it's not just like a kink on a nerve, it's actually all this, this fluid dynamic. And so that's why this is important. And then the other piece of this uh, uh, arterial flow and then venous flow out of the brain is, uh, is uh, we have this guy here. Yeah, so we have this picture here. We have venous flow coming out of the brain. Now, what Dr. Flanagan says is that the fluid flow up into the brain, it is a, uh, a pressure gradient. So when the fluid goes in, fluid has to match coming out immediately. If it doesn't, there can be a pressure buildup, what they call hydrocephalus or fluid on the brain, uh, pressure on the brain because the skull is tight and the fluid gets packed in there. And so it's really important that the fluid escapes quickly as soon as the blood goes up, the blood comes back down, CSF flow, another piece I'll talk about in just a second, has to get out immediately. It has to be balanced back and forth. And again, like I was saying, at that vertebral column is affecting that fluid flow. And again, this is a large percentage of the fluid flow coming out. And so going up, it's only 20%, but coming out, upright posture, this, this is a little bit um, kind of intense in the anatomy and physiology piece, but upright posture, there's actually more fluid coming through the small veins in the neck than through that big fat guy right there, the internal carotid. Uh, just based on the way the anatomy flows, this, this uh, big pipe right here, the, the sinuses of the brain, they actually drain more into this little guy and the, uh, the veins around the vertebral, arter, uh, the verte vertebral bodies. So it looks something like this. These little guys right here, these little guys coming down along the ver vertebral bodies rather than these big fat ones right here when you're upright. So that's a problem, right? Um, because if the bones are out of place, then it can affect that. Uh, and so another piece with that is, is uh, the difference between an artery and a vein. An artery has no uh, valves in it, but veins do. So veins actually back up, they can back up fluid. And the only thing that releases them is gravity and muscles uh, actually pumping them through. So. If your neck is out of place, that venous flow can back up into the skull and create what we call uh, neurodegenerative disorders. And so getting to the final point of this paper is uh, Dr. Flanagan talks about the relationship uh, of the craniospinal hydrodynamics and the craniocervical junction because uh, when that joint is out of place, the fluid flow backs up and then we can get uh, things like um, uh, dementia, uh, Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, sclerosis. And why? Because the fluid coming out of the brain takes away toxins and it takes away um, you know, some of the bad things that get built up in there. Um, the carbon, carbon dioxide, all the, you know, the, the metabolic waste from the brain. And so that balance through that spinal column is so, so important to brain health. And so this paper is, uh, is very in-depth. It goes through a lot of you know, anatomy and physiology on all of that. But uh, you know, just to step into that, into that uh, understanding that the fluid flow to the brain is just as important as the nerve flow uh, to and from the brain. And so that's what we're doing when we're correcting that upper neck it's not only just helping nerves fire better, but it's helping fluid escape the brain and get to the brain faster and more efficiently and easier. 
Um, so if you have any questions, give us a call at Arite Chiropractic in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Again, my name is Tyler Evans. Thanks for watching and have a great day.